Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll get started now since John's being impatient and he has better things to do. That's not true. I am here only for Brian. I have nothing else to do but be here for Brian. This is uh, so we'll let well, that's fine. We'll do a little do a little intro thing. So um this is we're gonna talk about the new authenticine um uh form filler router. Thing. I don't even know what you'd call that. We're going to talk about zip forms yes. in your car. Yeah. And the new Authenticine format. Is that better? I mean, I guess. I'm if not... you if you were teaching the class. Yeah, there you go. Um I I've been using the new the new form situation, like the, the new um the, the new system that they have in place. Um I think that it has way better features than the old one. Um, you can do a lot more at one time versus individual, individual, individual form. Like everybody knows, like when you go in to fill out your you know, listing agreement, whatever, right? You have your your form, right? It loads and, you know, you get to go through. You can do all this stuff, fill out all the pieces that you need to do. Um, you can do the fast fill, which, you know, just takes away all of the other words and only gives you only the options that you can fill out, which is, you know, nice, but it can also be a little confusing, especially if you're not a hundred percent familiar with the form, right? If you're a new agent or something like that, you'd never be able to fill it out this way. So I have a question. When you do, when you load your form, could you do it blank so we can start over from a blank canvas? For those of us that haven't used it, I appreciate you because you're like, you know, you're a teacher, you're, you're ex ALC. I appreciate it. You're, you're committed. <laughs> Seriously, I appreciate you. <laughs> you could have deleted your form. No, I can't because I have to go through and fill out. I have to. That. Thank, thank you. There's a lot of new agents here. That's why I'm asking that. Yeah, that's, that's why I have think up there. Yeah. Is this the beginning? I'm not, I'm not. Okay. Just for the record, I am not showing you how to fill out forms. Oh, okay. so no. Actually, I'm not going to do that because I'm not okay. sure if you if you want to learn how to fill out a form, I'd love to sit down and talk with you about that. But I'm going to show you the tools that you can use to fill out the forms. But we're not walking through how to fill out an RLA. We're not we're not talking about how I to fill the out. Forms. Yeah, okay, yeah. since you're doing that, we're, thank you, sir. We're we're just doing the tool itself and not the how to. So thank you for bringing up that teachable moment, John. I appreciate that. <laughs> like the gratitude here is overflowing today. <laughs> Okay, so we know we know what the old, you know, everybody's very familiar with the old form. So the new form editor, some of the differences. Now, eventually the old form editor is going to go away. So I wanted to do this because number one, eventually you're going to have to get used to the way that this happens. So one day you'll be forced to use it. But in my in my opinion, and I even went to, I found um, the Lone Wolf Company when we were at Family Reunion because they were there. And I was just like, man, I've got to tell you, like, I love this product. Like, I went and searched them out specifically just so I could tell them how much I love the new the new form. So we'll use, uh, was this listing agreement? Yeah, so we'll use a listing agreement here, and that's fine, cool. um, inside the forms and documents. So when you open this up, you know, usually it comes through, and, and the first thing that you get is the forms and documents. Um, this workspace right here, there's a lot of features that I don't even know about, like, as far as... Um, all of the absolute, you know, little tools that we have because I haven't played around with it that much. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've, uh, I've played around with it enough to know, you know, the, the majority of the stuff. So you can send any form, you can sign the forms, you can, all these little workspaces here. Now this workspace, um, you have to drag your files from your transaction right here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is someone saying something? Oh. Um, I mean, you can unmute, unmute yourself if you guys have a question or something like that. Um, I'd be happy to answer anything if you want me to slow down or whatever. Um, so inside your actual transaction is uh, all of the forms that are in your transaction, right? So in your other one, you when you open it, you click on a document and it opens up, you only have the option to edit that form. But sometimes you go, oh, I got filling out, you know, a, a, a listing agreement. And then I'm like, oh, okay, well, I also want to go ahead and do all of the documents that I'm going to do with the listing agreement, like the ABA or a market condition advisory or whatever. 
I go, okay, I don't have to back out and then go into each individual form. I can just add, I can just drag the ABA right here. And then it adds the form right here. So I can go all the way to the end of this listing agreement here. Or you could click on it, right? Yeah, or you can click on it. And then it takes you right to the, the document that you're working, that you want to work on. That's cool. So just that right there is a huge time saver to be able to load all of your documents up. But then I'm sure if you've done even one transaction, then you know that you go, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit this form, this form, this form, this form. I'm going to edit five different forms. And then I'm going to go get them e-signed, right? Then you have to go into your e-sign. You have to open up a packet. And then you have to remember all the forms that you did. And what happens if you forget one? You have to delete it. You have to delete the whole entire thing and start all over again. Like it's a huge pain in the butt. So this, this whole entire process is so much more streamlined now. So again, I'm not showing you how to fill out forms. Like you get to know all of where, where, what you're doing there. Well, for, for, sake of, for sake of that and time, you know how where it says Tanya Seller and Emily Seller, would you suggest going to parties to fill all that out? And then will it automatically go in there or do you fill it out no. so manually this, like before? I mean, so you, I, I fill out my cover sheet just like normal. I use the cover sheet, which pre-fills all of the transactional documents. So, well, that, that's, that's a time saver you could use. The parties here, this is just for, this is to, you know, um, assign fields for sure. Um, but I don't, I don't know if it actually fills each of these ones out here. These are just the, the parties. It Honestly, does. the parties don't really come into play until you start uh, preparing the signing. Got it. Thank so you. so parties, you can you can look to see who's in your parties for sure. And I believe if you yeah. add people into this form down here, it will add you know, right. the name there. I'm gonna try it and I'll hey, let you know. Don't breathe on me. Do you sicky? I'm not sick. Um, so the forms, right? So you have your grab your from transaction or whatever. You can search like you're like, oh, I don't know where it is in this list. I could do uh, MCA. Oh, I think you have to spell the whole entire thing. So mark. Yeah. So market condition advisory. So here it is right here. So I can drag that up there and it drag there. If I want to reorder them, I can reorder them by grabbing these little grids and then dragging it up or down however um, I want to do. So now residential listing agreement market condition advisory and the ABA is there. Listing information. So if you want to import information from your um, from your listings, you can do that here as well. Uh, this also works the same as the old MLS Connect, right? So when you MLS Connect, you put in a, a MLS number, then it pulls all the data in for the other party, the sellers, and all whatever whatever's in the MLS. Um, so that'll pull in there. Um, but listing information, offer info, and even these clauses here are. Um, more specific to uh, transactional management, not necessarily filling out these forms. Um, so for me, really, honestly, I mean, as far as like filling out the forms, like this forms and documents workspace here is what makes the magic happen because I can edit all of my listing documents because I like to do, you know, I'm an overachiever. I like to do my listing documents and all my seller disclosures and most of the buyer disclosures as well, all at one time during my listing agreement. I sign everything. I haven't signed the whole 57 pages or whatever. So that way, as soon as I get an escrow, boom, here's the seller's disclosures. Here's the buyer disclosures. You don't have to make them up. They're already pre-signed. Just send, send them, send them back. I like to do that because I like to control everything in my life. So that's a good point. Yeah, you can hush now. Um, so there is also markup tools in here, right? So, um, you know, right here, this, this uh, the, the ABA that we have. Um, if there was no address here and I was like, ah, oh, I didn't make it on my computer, so I didn't upload it with an address. I could take this um, text box right here, hit on the little button right here, and then I could type in one, two, three, four, Main Street, you know, California. And then that shows up in here. Now, <clears throat> specific to these little boxes here, um, the text markup, you can you can see this, this is save as default setting. Right. So I can go through here and I can go, uh, I'd rather this be a little bit larger. I want a 14 font point font. I want it to be in blue. Oh, that's cool. And I want it to be Times New Roman. So it looks a little fancy. And I want it to be bold. I can save this as my default setting so that the next time that I go to add a text box somewhere, Tools, text box. it comes up exactly the same way. So I don't have to keep changing it all the time to make it more my preference. I forgot, I have a microphone right here. I'm used to wearing the little microphone. So I was like, I was like, where's my microphone? Going? And I'm sorry, oh, how did you open that? Cause I'm double clicking it. And well, if you're paying attention and not trying to work while I was talking, John, then you'd know, but um, 
<laughs> you just click on the Be professional. Be professional. <laughs> you just click on the um the 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 font. What do you I don't know where you are in your well, I went to tools and I went text box, but it doesn't yeah. open to look up the no, you, markup. You click on the text box to let it know that you need to place the text box and then you place oh, then the text box. It. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, yep, no worry, gotcha. Um, so then you can go down here. You can even copy, duplicate, or delete your text box, whatever it is. Um, nice. You can also use your keyboard and just hit, you know, like backspace. Maybe, maybe it's delete. Nope, maybe not. There you go. So, um, yeah, so I believe that that's how you can um, key that. And then that will not just... And that's not save as default for just this transaction. That saves for every transaction in zip forms. So the next time I go into a different transaction, I open up a markup, it's going to be blue and that, that same font and everything like that. Oh, so nice. maybe you want everything to be in red so it stands out, you know, whatever you want it to be like, you can, you can make it. Um, you same thing with highlighting, you know, when you, when you do place some highlighting, this is, um, it, it's a, it's like a, it's like drawing a box or whatever. So it doesn't just, it doesn't notice, uh, it doesn't pick up the text and like allow you to highlight the text. It just, you can, you can, you know, highlight. I like that because it sounds like you can highlight where people need to sign and all that too. Exactly. That's cool. And again, the same thing, everything has a default setting. So if I don't want it to be yellow, maybe I, for me, I want it to be red. So I want it to come out that way. And I want the opacity to be a little bit darker so mm -hmm. I can change that. And then th this is going to be, I can say this is my default, um, my default one. However, in reality, I really like orange and they don't offer orange, which makes me really sad because that's my, <laughs> that, that is, is that one, is, I agree. that is how I highlight everything. Yeah. So um, it's a bummer that we can't do that. So anyway, so that, that's kind of fun. Now um, in certain things uh, in, when you're signing stuff, um, you have all of these other line freehand redact and strike throughs. Um, I don't know why they don't give it to you when you're just filling the forms out, um, but yeah, it, so these aren't options until you get into signing. So that is pretty much it. There is this um, clauses, you can create clauses. I, I, I watched a YouTube video about what this was really? and it seemed like it was going to be very interesting, like some a tool that we can use, hmm. um, like throwing on a, each property is individually or each brokerage is individually owned and operated above oil or something. Or you property can, sold as is or something. Right. And so you can add a, a title and a description or whatever. I, I haven't really figured out best use for it yet. So at this point, I haven't, I haven't really needed it. Um, I was going to ask, where would that go? <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I don't really even know what that would be. So um, offer, in, again, offer info and listing info. It's just information about your transaction that will be <laughs> backfilled into, you know, the cover sheets or it, it can be disseminated. That information can be disseminated in other forms as you need. You know, if you've got like a purchase agreement with offer information, you know, it'll, it'll pre-fill it. Now. So now the real fun thing uh, for, for me is you can either... Um, uh, you can print from here, right? So you can you can print the documents. You can download these documents if you want as a single file, a multi or a zip file or multiple files. So you have options. Um, so because we have more than one file or more than one uh, document in here, uh, we would we have those options. If you just have one single file, I don't think I think you just get the single file option. Um, if you hit back and you haven't saved anything, it usually will um, it will give you you know, a thing saying, do you want to save this first so you don't accidentally delete what you worked on? But there is an auto save feature. So every couple of minutes, it'll auto save for you. Um, so if it, if it auto saves, you know, then it'll back without any issue. Um, so, oh, so here's the other thing. Let's just say we go back in there and I'm going, okay. I was like, oh, I didn't want to go back. I wanted to sign those documents, right? If I go to open a new document and click on open a new form editor, it's going to ask me, hey, nope, it's not going to ask me. Maybe that, what would it normally ask you? Nor normally it asks me, do you want to load your previous workspace or do you want a new workspace? So I could say, yes, I want my previous workspace and it loads all the documents that were already in the last workspace. So I'm a little bit, more, I, I don't understand why it didn't ask me that. Um, so that's interesting. Let's get these up here again. Huh? Are they all folders? No, this is um this is uh inside your listing. 
which I've, I've, I've left feedback on here because, you know, you, I, I, I like to be as organized as possible. So inside my transaction, I, I create folders, especially if you have like a multiple offer situation, or you have a listing that felt went, went into escrow, fell out of escrow, went into escrow, fell out of, if you have one of those, I like to keep all of the old documents, first escrow, second escrow, third escrow, or whatever. Um, the forms, however, in, in your transaction, they are all in this one list. And even if you have multiple versions of one document, like it can get kind of confusing because it doesn't allow you to access your individual folders. Like, oh, I want to pull from the new transaction. So I want to pull just the new RPA. So if you have three RPAs in your transaction anywhere, it will list all three RPAs. So you have to, you have to make sure you're in the right folder. Not it, Yeah, it doesn't even matter. Manage the, form. The, the form, the, fo the folder doesn't matter. I feel like the folders are like, I don't even know what this, this is Shallon Road offer and acceptance like i don't even know why that that's not even a folder in this transaction so i don't even know where that came from so it sounds like they're going to so it seems like this, this is something they've got to work on yeah so funny. um so you know obviously there, there's there's always room for improvement okay so uh let's just make sure that all these documents here have words and things so that we can prep for uh yeah okay where should we go so now we're going to prepare signings now all these documents i'm like okay i want to prepare for signing Okay, we're going to hit prepare for signing. First thing it's going to do, ask you which one you want to use. You have your alternate, you have DocuSign and your old digital ink. So if you use the old digital ink, which was the free one here, or if you use DocuSign, you can you can still use them if you want. Are they taking that away too, the old digital ink? Yeah, the old digital ink will eventually go away. DocuSign, they won't take away because that's not their product, but I got you. So we're going to go new AuthentiSign. And so this is where you would normally, your first pop-up, you know, where you create your subject line of your emails. Um, that's what the signing name is. So it's your packet name, but it's also going to be your um, uh, the subject line of all the emails that send out for this particular packet. So if you, I like to make sure that my address is always in the subject line for everything. So that way I can go through my emails and say, I want 866, you know, whatever, Orange Street. And then all of my emails for that are come up, including all of the, the, the authentic sign stuff. Um, so I'm just going to put this as the faker tester. Um, one, two, three, Orange Street. I can't leave that. That would drive me insane. Okay. So there we go. And then if you want, if you want your all of your your um, responses, all of your signature files, all of your si <laughs> signature, <laughs> all of your sign files to go back into a specific folder inside your transaction, right? You can do that. You have your main folder, which goes just, it'll just drop them at the bottom. Oh, that's cool. So you or can call you it can, like listing folder. Yes, you can call it listing folder, or you can call it offers, or you can call it whatever you want. And then you can select that folder. You so, know what I like about this, guys, is that if you have, like, I, I name my folders also like Brian does. But what I like about this is if you have a listing folder, and then let's say you're about to expire and you do a modification of terms. No, turn, get, no. Um, and let's say you do a modification of terms in, in all seriousness, once that form is signed and you've extended your listing, the cool thing is, is you can have it go into the same folder and you can separate it so that if you have a purchase folder, then great. And then that's totally organized because you, you got to make sure you get organized. That's for sure. Yeah. I like that. Hold on a second. There we go. Um, okay. Um, so we're going to hit create. It's just going to go back in the main folder. Oh, wait, I did all of that work and I forgot the WHSD, right? I forgot a document. What do I do? Easy. Just go over here to documents, add a document or form. I can go through here and go, oh, here's my statewide buyer seller advisory. Definitely got to add that. It just adds it to the That's bottom. That's pretty cool, man. Just to be able to like, oh, you don't have to save it. You don't have to go back. You don't have to go and recreate the That's whole entire great. packet. All of it right here from your deal. Now, so let's go over signers right now. We have, we already have all the documents. We, we can see here, we've got four documents here to sign. So signers, um, this gives you two options. You can set the signing order, which I like because of course I like to control things. So I like to know that I'm signing first and then it's going to send out because that also allows me to complete this process. 
and then it can sit in my email until I'm ready for them to sign. Then I can sign and it goes off and it starts to process that. So I like to do that. But if you don't do that, what it's going to do is it's just going to send one email to everybody. And then as everybody signs, there's no specific order. When everybody can get to it, then the document will be done. So if that's how you like it, if you like chaos and anarchy, then you can do that. I don't like no that. Likes that. I like order and that sort of thing. I second that. The only difference is I sign I, I sign last because and the reason why I do that is because I when I, by the time I get the signature request, I know everyone's done kind of thing. You know, oh, yeah. that's I don't know. I'm just... Um, so there's there's four different things you can do in here. You can add yourself. I never recommend doing that because for some reason I don't know why. If you do this, it it does bring up this stuff or whatever, but. I feel like it, it comes to more of an edit field and I don't, uh, I don't know why that does that. What you should do is if you filled out all of your contact information in your, con in your, the, transaction. the, in the transaction somewhere or whatever, if you go from transaction, you'll have all of the people who you already have set up. So I can say, Oh, okay. I'm the listing agent. Uh, we're going to send it to uh, Maria and Emily, right. Or seller to a buyer. To, no, there's a seller. Why do I have two sellers up there? So who's the other oh, seller? Tanya. Oh, Tanya, there you go. Okay, so you can set them up as remote signers or just a reviewer. Maybe you've got you know, a spouse who's not on the program, not on the loan, not oh, on the contract, cool. but they still wanna be involved. You can just set them up on there as a reviewer so that they get the documents with everybody else or that's maybe cool. your transaction coordinator or somebody else who you want to get the documents after everything's done, you can set them up as a CC. That's cool. So as long as your person is in your um, is in your uh, uh, deal here, then you should be able to do that, and you can search for them by name. Um, but everybody's just listed alphabetically um, by first name. So, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and hit select. So now we have all of these remote signers, and now the system is gonna go. Okay, well, seller two, listing agent, seller one, good to go. Um, you can. You're, you're, that's not the order you want, though, right? you want it to be first. Yeah, exactly. So if I want to be first, then I can go ahead and drag my name up top here, or I could just, um, I could put uh, a two here. And then these people, they'll get the, the email at the same time. Cool. Or I can change that to three. And then now everybody has a specified order. Oh, nice. So however you want to do it, it's fine. Um, also, you can map signers. Uh oh, hold on. We got the chat up in the chat. Who does zip two separate things? Those does two it? separate things. Oh yeah, yeah. Zip, yeah. They they use DocuSign, but that's what we're we're not we don't that's what we're not talking about here. Um, you can map the signers as well. So um, you can say, oh, I want buyer one to be ignored, seller one to go here, da, da, whatever. Like if, um, what are the options for that? Yeah. So I mean, you can ignore or you can specify whose role is what. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you can assign the signature blocks right there. And so it's going to go through and it's going to add all of the signature blocks here. No, you exited. Huh? You exited. I know, Add but participants. No, that's weird. No, the signers are there. It should already have everybody there. So I want to yeah, sign signature box. Oh, is this going to be fun? This is going to be one of those great one days. Of those, where they, one of those days where they it's all messed it's up. It's all messed up and nothing's great. working. You're trying to explain how great everything is and doesn't show it. That's Yeah, that's super fun. <clears throat> but it's okay. Oh, what about next? Huh? Can you do next? No, no, no. I don't know. No. Um, so um, oh, that's weird. To find out all of the things that you have, you have tools, right? So all the tools are under here. You can select yourself. Um, which it's weird that they put yourself and then you're also as the seller's agent. So, uh, you know, but I always go with the colored versions, right? The, 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 these ones, because these are going to have all of the same blocks here. So in this situation here, I would go to Tanya here and I would place my signature and then it automatically brings the date. So I can bring the date over here. Oh, that's so much better. Um, there's signer field, you know, you can add somebody's, you know, a printed name. If you get it, if, if you get one of those agents who doesn't pre-fill any documentation, you know, information out and you have to put all of your information in for your seller, they don't, they don't do that for you. you oh, can that do, was the text line? Yeah, you can do signers field, auto date, and here's all the other markup. You can write a text box. Now, this is for, if you, if you do a markup text box, right, you click on it and you go, okay, I want you to type here. 
we can type stuff in here before the the last system. If you had if you had a text box assigned to somebody, only that person could type in it. So if you're trying to fill out something for somebody and putting in a little bit of information so that they don't have to do as much work, you have that option now, which is really nice. And of course, you have default settings, so you can change all of these things to be exactly what you want them to be. Um, which I think I delete that. And then da, 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 same thing, scale, right? So instead of um, instead of clicking and dragging, which all of these features are available on mobile, tablet, your phone, it makes it so much easier because instead of trying to grab one of those little boxes with your finger while you're standing in line waiting or trying to do something yeah, on the go, so much you can just click on it and then hit the scale button and make it bigger. And then boom, there you go. There's their name big. Um, same thing with the signing, right? Um, it can be required, it cannot be required. You can add a name block or no name block. You can add a date or timestamp. So if you add a timestamp, it puts that in there too. And they're separate, which is kind of weird. So you have to kind of, um, uh, you have to, if you put a timestamp on there, you have to kind of, you know, line it up with the other one so that it's, you know, there. So for the most part, I'd say, I don't know. I'd that's if that. you want. That's thing. if you want it, right. Yeah. And so you can save all this stuff as default so that your, 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 your signature is big or as small as you want it, all that stuff. And you can save everything and have that set up exactly the way that you want it to be. Um, initials, text line, checkbox, which is really nice. Again, you can you can throw a drop down, right? And then you can name the drop down. What values do you want in the drop down, right? Like maybe you you want them, you want to give your your seller a choice of, I don't know, options to choose from. You can just create a drop down, and then they, and then they put it in there. So you could say um, buyer, seller, investor, whatever you want, and then you can have it say, oh, the default is going to be buyer because, the, or the default is going to be seller because this is a, 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 a drop down. Like this, or this is a listing. What would you have the drop? I mean, what would that be for? Like, where would you put that? Yeah, I don't. I don't really have any idea. That I've never, for... never, I've never come across a place where you'd need to give them a choice of something. Uh -huh. um, so I don't really know what it is, but it's a really cool feature to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just you curious. You know, I'm just no. curious what, what is radio choice. Radio choice. So you have, um, oh, this one right here is specifically. Let me, let me actually. I was say that's for your bubbles, right? Yeah. So um, very specifically, you can use the radio choice. Where is, oh which one is it um, TDS or SPQ? Yeah, yeah, the TDS they have they, they ask for SPQ. I'd go SPQ. Show them that. I don't. That's not what I was thinking of though. Oh no, uh, the 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 uh, AS the uh, the affidavit of non-form status. Oh, yeah, right, SPQ. because the, in there they very specifically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sign. Cool. At least that work. So the seller's affidavit of what are you doing? Oh, then you click on. Oh, I'm am I right there? No, All right. Well, apparently that's not going to jump to that one. Um, so in here, right here, you have two, you have two options for radio buttons, right? Um, they either need to check if they're an individual or if they're a corporation. So you could delete those and then put down, uh, put a radio choice down and then you could put one here and then put one right here. Sorry, this mouse is really crazy. So I'm, I would do this. Like you're mm -hmm. asking what that is because this has it already automatically because yep. your seller signing it. If you upload your own document, right. you have to always drag everything. Right. So like the reason why I said SPQ is because they're side by side, just like the default when you click on it. So then you can just drag them and, and do it by hand, which is really nice that they give you that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's like, um, so let me see, where's the, so it does like, obviously this one was already pre-filled. This one already had all of the, the name dates and all that good stuff in there. Um, there also is a way that, and this is the coolest feature ever. So, I mean, this, I mean, this works just like the regular zip forms, all that stuff. I feel like you get a little bit more options with the documents to add a range and, you know, 
uh, it makes it a lot easier to do that stuff. But this is where it gets cool because you have layouts. So if you have a document that you always upload, ABA, right? That's a PDF that never can be recognized by the system because it's not a zip form document, right? There's this ABA. Is the next one? There it is, right? So my layout options, I can create, I can create a layout. Um, Why is it maybe manage maybe a uh... modification? Okay, so I have one for um uh, I was like I knew I did one for something, but it was uh an MT uh, layout. That's the one that I did. So let me see if we go here. No, in tools. I can put seller, sign here, the date over here. Oh, also, um, so in these, with these kind of things, you can have a transparent background or you can have a not transparent background, which I feel like it is not necessarily one way or the other, but I think it's pretty cool. So uh, once you create this layout and you're putting the signers, even though it's for this particular transaction going forward, Will it automatically put the sellers or the buyers based on that transaction? Yeah. So what you can do, what you'll do is, um, so right here, I just did it for the ABA. And so this will be um, ABA sellers. I'll put um, seller sign. And then if I hit create, what it's do, what it does is it says, oh, okay, seller one and seller two, their signature fields and their date fields go into this automatically particular area all the time. So if you were to upload one that had no, you know, that just an ABA, you could go over here to layouts, click on apply a layout, oh, choose so ABA, cool. and then hit assign layout, you know, uh, what? That's weird. Why is it doing that? Oh, right here. Oh, I should have put, I should have modified, I should have put ABA because it doesn't tell you what seller sign is. So now I'm going to uh, apply seller signature to this layout or to the ABA oh, that's cool. and then it will overlay and it's going to tell you hey, who, who's who cool assign signature blocks boom and then it all so this out. this does it automatically like right now just so everybody so now it just, it just added them again that's why there's two of them because so in the old system when you add a document you're always having to drag and drop right you have to in this system when you add a document even though you, instead of dragging and dropping, what you're saying is you click apply layout and it does it for you automatically every time. Yeah, if it's something that you that's constantly so have. much time saving. I know. Oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah, it is. It's a. Uh, it's very very neat to do, be able to do that. That's oh, you guys have no idea. Who here? Never mind. I'll ask the question later. <laughs> you can ask me. I'm just. Oh no. No, I was just going to say if you guys do, you know, more than three transaction, three three transactions in a month. This is going to save you so much yeah. time. <clears throat> so just, just so we can look at it from the beginning, you hit, you get to your ABA and you go, oh, I don't want to drag and drop all of these things. I go layout, apply, apply the layout, and then ABA seller sign. And see like this one right here, it already knows all these other ones, right? It, the statewide buyer seller advisory. But also if you get one that's wonky, right? So you get, your your statewide buyer seller advisory but the the signature fields are really small and you want them bigger and you don't want to go and touch every single one you want to i mean you can literally have your entire this is every document that we have in here to you, sign you can, you we can, can apply a layout that's modified to exactly what you want boom 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 lay them all out hit apply assign the fields all your things prefill for you that's so if you're doing all of these a lot any repetitious work where you're like, oh, God, I don't want to do this again, right? Now you have an option to just apply all of your layouts. So um, so now I can go here, do the seller sign, and then it's going to apply. It's also going to apply statewide, and it's going to apply both of these. So, so it does all your documents, whether they're in there or not. Unless you collect, unless you turn off the other ones. Like, Oh, I see. You, you could, I could do that. Just see. Oh. But even, you see, they even came in a little bit off because I saved it. I didn't have them perfectly lined up right, or anything right. like that. So... Any, you have to make sure it's exactly what you want and then hit create the layout 
and make that make it that. So way. what you're saying is initially it'll be a little bit of work to customize it however sure. you want the first time, but you're gonna have to do that first time no matter what. So yeah, yeah. that's cool. I'm gonna see if I can manage the layout because I really want to. There it is. And whenever something comes up to sign, it just comes up automatically. It, it, it well, goes to their email. Yeah, yeah. so it, it recognizes ABA. Now, in my next, do if another document that I have isn't named the exact same thing, it may not recognize it, but I know that it's an ABA. So I can go over and say, hey, this is, you know, one, two, three, four Main Street ABA, right? The system says, mm, I don't know that that's ABA because the other one was named ABA. Right. So I can, I know I said ABA way too many times now, it doesn't even sound like a word. Um, so now I can just go in there, but it doesn't matter because I'm, it will look for it. If it's the exact same file name, it, it will apply it for sure. And it will know to apply it there. But if your ABA is uploaded and it's a, named a different name or whatever, then so just make sure you're uploading all your ABAs as ABA and it'll be, it'll recognize it. So pretty cool. Um, that very cool. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I think that, well, let me see. So even like this, uh, like the, the residential listing agreement, like I don't know why this one is, I, I must have uploaded a, a PDF and not a, um, a zip form doc. That's the only thing that I can think of. And, and for the layouts, where did you go? Layouts. But where, where were you for that? Layouts. You have to be in your signature. You're in signatures. Oh, yeah, okay. so you can't do it. Yeah. Right. Some options, if you want, you can um, you can change your signature, right? So I, I have all my stuff. So you can set your signature. You can have, if you access this on a tablet or whatever, you can use a pen. You know, you can draw it like normal, um, or you can do change it to styles. You know, and give all the different. There's a lot of different. Um, I think there's more now. You know. So we really want to get fancy with it, or you can upload your own image of your own signature and it'll, it'll apply it. So let's say, hopefully, it did not. I do not want to change the signature. Um, signing details, right? So if you're like, oh man, I need to, I forgot to add the address in my, you know, whatever, you can go in here so that you can change this packet's name. Um, expiration dates, you know, uh, if you want to set expiration dates, reminders, you can set. You can set your own reminders so that if someone, you know, you send off your, your signature packet to be signed um, and you know that they're notorious for never checking their email or never, you know, signing their stuff, you can set to send a reminder every one day at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. If you know they work overnights and they get up at 3 p.m., then you can set it for whatever time and date you want. And it can be either one day, every two days or every five days. Or you can have no reminders at all. You also have yeah. like forgot, forgot it like like this, and even after I signed, you didn't send me this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can even choose where you want the authentic sign. Like, you know, you get that little stamp up at the top of the corner of your document that says authentic sign, da, 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 gives you that long string of numbers. So you can choose whether you want top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right. Oh, so cool. it's like if you want it to move to the bottom so it's a little more of a, you know, a little bit out of the way, um, you can do that. And I, I thought I like that. So I'm going to change that to bottom left. Um, and then you can clear everything. If you're like, oh man, you know what? I just mucked this whole entire thing up. I want to just start over real quick. Settings, clear signing fields, clear markups, boom. All of your documents come out fresh. Reapply your layouts or whatever it is that you so want to do. So I have a question on layouts. Um, and if your answer is yes, which I think it is, it'll make it really easy for everybody. So you're, let's say you're a listing agent and you're helping a seller and you get an RPA from a buyer's agent. You review it with the seller, and then you're like, cool, we're going to send a counter offer. And currently, the way we do it in the old way is you fill out your, your counter offer, and then you upload your, your RPA. You, and then to send it to the seller, you have to drag all the initials and all the signatures, dates, and everything. So does that mean yes. that I can add an RPA to a test file, right? Make sure there's no names so that it doesn't get confused. Yeah. Start a signature for it and add a layout for RPAs with all the blocks in there. And, and so you mean to tell me all that the little signatures, all the initials. So when I when I upload an RPA for a seller, yes, and I have and I send out the the counter with the with thing, you mean to tell me when I manage layout and I apply it, all that's in there in, in seconds. Yes. Oh my gosh. Now the caveat to that is. The RPA has to be, that. yeah, RPA, the RPA has to be the complete RPA because 
if somebody, some of these agents like to break apart the RPA from the, you know, all the little disclosures at the front and the back. And so if you get just a 20, 16 page RPA. Oh yeah. Yeah. I see what it's you gonna mean. F the whole So I'd have to, up. I'd have to have layouts for literally every document we use every day so that yeah. if it is broken up, I can just click, oh, okay. The AD is separate. Let me click AD, put the blocks in for the buyers and, and or for the seller and we're done. Right. Guys, I hope but you, still. I hope you switch to this because <laughs> I will be honest and tell him like up to like yesterday, I probably would have told him he was crazy for having me use this. I'm switching. Yeah. I'm not going back. That's crazy. Yeah. No, it's, it's such a time saver. Um, and again, you already have to go through all the process no matter what, if you're like, ah, I'm not going to use the layouts, then you're still going to do that. You're still yeah. going to drag and drop everything, but that's, a, that's why a, not every time you, you fill out a form, just go, Oh, I'm going to go ahead and create a layout, name it the form name and whatever the situation is. Like I'm uh, filling this out residential listing agreement for buyers or no, for our, a residential purchase agreement for buyers or the residential purchase agreement for seller acceptance or seller rejection or, or, you know, all that stuff. You're already going through the scenarios, save the layout. You never know when you're going to be able to save yourself 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. It saves so much time. It's absolutely. Wow. And That's... imagine trying to do that on your phone where you're trying to do all these, you're out somewhere and you're like, Oh, I got to get this thing. Except you're on your phone. You're trying to get it all the drag and drop. Nope. Apply layout. Boom. It's all done. Send it off. You're gonna look like a rock. I'm going star. through and adding every app, every document we use, just so everyone knows, into this test transaction. Because once I do my layouts, no matter what transaction I'm in, I can manage it or apply it, which is great. So but again, you have options for you know printing, saving, downloading, all that good stuff. Um, if, if you want to give them feedback, there, there's this is still again this is a this is a new thing. So this is still going to be you can put in here. Look, I love this or I hate it or man or whatever. And then if you say you can contact you or whatever, when you hit confirm, they'll ask you for an email address and phone number. And I did that a couple of times because I'm like, look, you've got to be able to do this. Like the folders thing, you know, pulling documents. Because if you have a very busy transaction or if you have something that keeps failing, I'll have like four RPAs in there. And it's like, I don't think, oh, I need to name RPA, you know, failed transaction, you know, whatever. I'm just going to put RPA or whatever. So I'd be like, oh, nope, I added the wrong one. Oh, nope, I added the wrong one. Okay, I have to add the third one. And you go through that. Like, I really want them to be able to identify, oh, I want to grab this form from this folder specifically. So um, so you can give them feedback. That will help. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit next and then finalize the setup, right? So you have the option again to, when, when does this packet expire? Um, today is the 23rd. So I think it, yeah, it's set for 48 hours. Um, but you can say, uh, you know, I'm going to give them till next Friday at midnight. No, no big deal. Or, and then you can also set a reminder every day at, you know, 11 AM and you can customize the invites, right? You, so just like the last version, the, the authentic sign, you can say, Hey, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be more specific, more intentional with my emails. You know, I'm going to put in my own subject line and create a, Hey, here's the documents. And let me talk to you about what they are, you know, whatever. And I can give you extra I don't know, extra advice or whatever. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you just want like, just send me the original email, you know, the way that it goes out, you click on send. And then that's it. Your invitation has been sent. Then you access them the same way. So once the, the packet's been sent, you can go into your, your normal e-sign, you know, tab up here. And you'll, you'll see the packet. There it is. So you'll see a packet here that's been sent. If you click on it, you go, okay, look at here's Brian Collins. Uh, here's the, the 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 sellers. You know, have they been able to do this or not? You know, whatever. Um, you can reset it. Like, oh, for some reason it's not working for me. Whatever. Like, you can just reset the whole entire thing. Everybody starts over again. Instead of having to cancel, go back in and redo the whole entire packet again and try to resend it. I feel like the other one had a way that you had to like go into this weird history and copy a a string of, email. it was weird. So now you can do that. You can just resend invitations. Um, you can duplicate this packet if you want to, for whatever reason, you can do that. Or you can go ahead and you're like, oh man, I forgot my TC. Crap, what am I gonna do? Action items, add TC, oh, so add weird. CC from contacts. And then I can go in here. If I go to zip form contacts, that's where I keep Alyssa. Oh, Alyssa's not here anymore, boo-hoo. So now I have to change that. Thanks, Alyssa for leaving us for greener pastures. Um, 
So there we go. So now I've added a CC or a, a, a CC, which before you couldn't do that. You just had to wait for it to finish or cancel it and go back in and add them in manually. Um, but you can also see the individual forms. You can see the history, right? Um, you can edit, right? Right from here. As long as nobody signed yet, you can you can save and edit the the form, everything right there. So I have a question: When you're initially um, when you're initially doing a document that automatically puts your blocks on there since the blocks are on automatically on there could you also save that as a new layout for the future or is it only on documents that you're uploading blank no no you can save layout for anything so so, so like you, like if you prefer script. a specific more uh, more um accurate layout uh -huh. you know you, uh -huh. the, the the rpa or whatever like right. it comes up and you're like eh, the, so you can do the layout no matter what documents in there whether it's auto and your layout will overlay anything that that, that, that the system has yeah. okay that's cool then I, I, sh I don't even have to really do this but, no. but i'll do it anyways um you can also you have the same options resend reset duplicate or signing details from the outside of the packet so you don't even have to go inside there oh apparently i do have a folder in there hmm. so um that's that's pretty much it. I mean, that this is what I, you know, what I've been excited about. This is what I've been using. I think that this is a ridiculously great upgrade to um, anything. I don't, I, some people use DocuSign. I feel like that that's fine, Danny, or whatever, but I feel like why pay for tools that we already have for free available? And this is just getting better. So I feel like we have a lot more time saving things or whatever. And, and maybe DocuSign has all that stuff, but I don't, I don't really have no, I've absolutely never used it. So. Yeah, the one thing I will say about DocuSign is it is definitely more confusing to me. I, I have tried using it. I know I know agents that swear by it, but you know, at the end of the day, if you don't pay for it and, and people send you something DocuSign, you can still see it, print it out, or you can still yeah. do it. You get like a certain amount for free. And then you know, you can kind of do it there. But this is definitely more uh it's a lot easier for sure. Okay. Yeah, it's almost there. It's almost there. So I had a problem adding a file, the agent visuals, into the, the folder. And I just wondered how you guys do that. Adding an avid? Yeah. Oh, like from a, another agent? No, it's from me, but I don't know how to uh, put it into the folder. Into what? What do you mean? Like into zip one? Yeah, into a zip one. Um, well, I mean, you can add documents by clicking on the add documents and this will browse the computer. This will open up, you know, uh, the, the computer that you can browse for any documents that may be here. Um, I don't know what this profile is, but I'm going to load it. And so and then I can name it, whatever I want to name it. So if it was an avid, I could name oh, it weird. avid. Right. So that, I like that'll add and it always adds to the very bottom. Whatever you add shows up down here. Um, so there's that way, or, I mean, if you, you know how to pull it, obviously from here, right? So we're done with this. So you have the agent visual inspection. I already got one there, but it's, you know, so you can add it there, but again, everything adds to the bottom of the, the document or at the, at the bottom of your transaction all the time. So I will tell you sometimes that when you're uploading stuff, it will, it seems like it uploads and then if it errors out, um, they do have, I think, a limit. So if your document is really, really big, um, like 25 megabytes or something like that, like I don't think it'll load. Sometimes it, it'll it'll keep it from loading. Okay. Like where, where like. Well, like you know, you gotta type out, you know, what you need, what you want them to fix. And so then they answer you, oh, I'm going to fix this and this and this. No, that's a request for repair. Right. Okay. Well, it's both. I had trouble with both of them. Yeah, I mean the, well, I mean the avid is just your visual inspection, but your request for repair should be. Oh, I, this is a listing. I don't have a request for repair. Yeah. So, which is fine. So, so can I go to an old transaction to start my layouts, or how do you recommend we do that? Do whatever. Because it are, the contact name is already in an old transaction. So if I set the layouts for an old transaction, then it'll just start from there going forward, right? You said the layout's saved. 
Yeah. Okay. Stuck on layout. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's that you guys have no idea. And some of you might, but you have no idea how much time it takes to drag those signatures. It's so terrible. It's like 500 of them. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that, oh gosh, I'm sure TCs love that too, because I would think so. It's a time saver for sure. Yeah, so the request for, oh, so here, now it's asking. So it says, do you want to open the last workspace or start a new one, right? So I have my listing agreement. Uh, and then it says, oh, you can add this request for repair, right? So it's like, oh, that's what I want. I wanted all of them together. I can do that. Or I can just start a new workspace with the request for repair and just start over scratch. Mm -hmm. And then I can set up a new signing for this one, you know, all that stuff. So does anybody have any questions on Zoom? I can't, I don't see faces, but. Anybody have anything that they, questions or anything? Because if not, then that's pretty much it. We can go and y'all can try it out for yourselves and see if that's something you, you want to do. Thank you guys so, so much. It's blank and it's not letting me create the layout. Could you show us how to create the layout? Unless someone has a question, then they can ask. No, I mean, I don't, you don't have any signers in there. Oh, okay. Never mind. Got it. You got to have signers to create a layout. So you have to fill it out as if there's somebody there and you can use a fake whatever because it'll just remember the places. That makes sense. The, it just remembers the placeholders. It doesn't not necessarily remember who, who it was. Yeah, it just like says seller one signs here. Gotcha. And then the, we want the boxes to be placed in this manner. So, okay. Then I can go to layouts. All right. Well, if there's no question. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, I was saying thank you. Oh, thank okay. you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, Brian Collins at kw.com. Email me, and I'll be happy to walk you through it. Um, otherwise, see you all later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Huh? We're done here too, right? Yeah, yeah, we're here. Done here. Yep, that's it. So I have to go through and redrag every. So it's better that I do this layout thing when I'm when you're doing a transaction because you have to. You have to. I have to re. I have to re redrag everything, reset it up, because like, because like what I'm doing is I'm doing it on on this one that's actually. Ah, sure. So it's already completed. Like this is an old transaction. So like, oh yeah, yeah. If I go down to here. Oh, actually, no, I used the blank one. So I'd have to redrag all my signature blocks and then it lets me create a layout because right now it's only giving me the option to manage a layout. Right. Okay. So, so it, it, it's, it doesn't make sense to do it now. I'll do it when I have No, you do it when you, as you're doing your yeah, documents, just so that doesn't. way you have that. Um, you're already in that workflow. You might as well just save it. All right. Thanks for. You're welcome. Did you record it? Yep. Oh, cool. I thought we were still. Bye, Shelly. Bye, Greg.